Hello, and welcome back to our Top 100 Board Games of All Time, where Dork's Gone Wild. I'm Kyle. And I'm Tina. And this is number 30 through 21. So my number 30 is a game that's pretty new to us, but instantly fell in love with it. And I actually had a gap in my listing somehow, so I had to add a game, so I kind of cheated and put this one in here. <laughs> uh, this one is El Vicio. This is a fun little, uh, we played it three-player um, it's from the same guy who did Istanbul and Las Vegas. Love this one a lot. We've only played it once so far. It's a pick up and deliver game where you're kind of actually trying to negotiate where you're going to be on the board so uh, you can have these middlemen, they're called, come to you and deliver goods to you instead of paying to go to them to get them or bribing them. I believe you're bribing them in this yeah, game. So, a fun little game. Very interesting mechanics. It has a lot of powers that change a lot as the game goes along. And it really affects the game dramatically. But we really like this one. We've only got one play in this one. But it, we, we really like this one. Yep. My number 30 is Bora Bora. <coughs> I loved this one the first time we played it. It is busy, though. There's a lot going on. But it's Feld, so, you know, it's all, there's always a lot going on in Feld games. It was made in 2013, and it plays two to four. We've played it, well, I've we played it six times. Six times. So. We don't get it out very much. It's very complex. Um, plays in about an hour and a half, and it's got dice, but you're using those dice a little differently, which I think is one of Feld's trademarks, which I like. Card drafting, set collection, worker placement, and it's got those different paths to victory, and you want to do them all, and you can't. Guys, it was crazy. Um, yeah, I do really like the dice mechanic in this one. You're using them to, you're actually counting each pip as kind of like currency, right? Is, is Are they just different? Yeah, depending on what you roll, you can do different things with them. Yeah, and um, then there's like god cards that can affect how you use your dice as well to boost you along how you need them. Um, the strategy and using your dice, yeah. I really like the dice mechanic, evidently, in this one. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's it's one of my it's one of my favorite felds. Bora Bora. Bora Bora. My number twenty nine is a little uh, Kickstarter micro game called Eggs and Empire. I'll hold this one up; it's pretty small. It is a two to six player game. We played it nine times, I think. Um, I played this one probably more than you have on on yeah. this one. I really like this one. This is a nice game to just uh, get out on the table real quick as a filler that has some depth to it but so, there's still a lot of luck to it um, this plays a lot like Libertalia or Citadels where you're, everybody's playing a card at the same time and everybody has a special power you're trying to guess what everybody else is trying to do in the same one you got some exploding eggs and some good eggs and you're trying to get the good eggs and not get the exploding eggs it's got some really cool mechanics on how things tie break and they move around the table uh, we actually did a review for this one so uh, if you want to check out our channel you can see a review for Eggs and Empire uh, highly recommend this one. I don't think it's available quite yet uh, to the mass public, but uh, I think it is going to be soon, if not already. Uh, Eggs and Empire. <clears throat> My number 29 is Guild Hall. And this is the expansion box, but they both fit in this box, which is nice. I like it when they do that. Um, it is a uh, hand management and set collection game. It's got a lot of take that in it. And basically, you're racing to get 50, 20, 20 VP. Yeah, it's I think a, it's 20 yeah. VP. Um, the art in it is pretty quirky, and I don't know why I love this game so much. It's it's a lot of fun. It's very frustrating because Kyle and I are very competitive at this game for some reason, like more so than normal, and I tend to win it a lot, <laughs> which makes me love it even more, of course. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a really good game and. The, I think even the expansion added a little bit more to it. Not everybody likes the expansion. But yeah. I liked it. Um, but that's my 29. It was made in 2012. It plays 2 to 4. We've played it 20 times, so yeah, we like it a little. So it is also <laughs> my number 28, so <laughs> might as well keep it out here. Yeah. So uh, I, I do like how the expansions, we can put these two together. We can intermingle them. We can pick and choose what we want. Uh, the setup time's not too bad on it. You do have to kind of go through there when you when you start naming and try to figure out what cards need to be in there, what what doesn't. Uh, great set collection game. Uh, I'm horrible at colors. I have trouble picking up colors, but this one's fine. This one's pretty easy for me. Uh, every power's got a little thing different. Um, 
trying to guess what everybody else is trying to do. There's some meanness to it, which is really nice for a Euro to have some different mean meanness to it every once in a while. Really like Guildhall. My number 28. <clears throat> My number 28 is Zulkin, which has already been on Kyle's list. I love this game so much. It is a very cool board because it's got the wheels and you turn the main wheel and all the other ones turn with it and it'll move your guy to the next spot and that can be good or bad depending on if you're paying attention and you have to feed your people which Kyle never does he hates to feed his people he's mean no, I like people. it was made in 2012 it plays two to four players we've only played it four times but we haven't had it that long either <clears throat> and it plays in about an hour and a half I'd like to get this one on the table more, and I would definitely like to try out the expansion, too, because... Yeah, we have not played the expansion, um, but le this is just a fabulous game. It but is. It really is. And it's got set collection, worker placement, and it gives you the dynamic worker placement, which is a new a new mechanic with this game. Um, so you either have to place, all, place one or more of your people out, or you have to take one or more of your people off. So that's kind of cool that it has a new mechanic, because... We're always looking for those. The gears, though, <clears throat> are fantastic. It just really makes this game even better. Um, and you have to please the gods. Kyle doesn't like doing that either. I don't do that either. No. Nope. You're very selfish when you play. But the game. this is definitely not a gimmick game. It's a it's a good game. Just because it has gears on it doesn't mean this is just a gimmick. It's it's a solid game. If it didn't have the gears, they did some other method. It'd still be a really good game. That's true. It definitely would. The only thing I don't like about it is that we don't get it on the table very often. But that's my number twenty-eight. So, my number 27 we don't have. Uh, this is probably one of the few games on here that Tina hasn't played either. It's Here I Stand. It's a uh, up to six player war game, and it is a long, drawn out, great war game. Uh, really love this one. We've only played it, uh, I think, four times. Um, we, uh, we have a gaming group, a war group that does it, uh, plays this one. Uh, it's about eight hours generally when we play it. It's very long. It's a card driven game so you get a hand of cards and everybody's got specialty powers. It's all based on history and on the cards you can either do the action or you can do the use the action points on it. So it's a really cool mechanic. You negotiate in this deal. There's a lot of negotiation. A lot of backstabbing. Uh, there's a lot of oh man moments in this game where you're like oh man I am so screwed right now because I can just see it coming uh, definitely a lot of fighting in this game I mean, it's a war game it's mean backstabbing lying cheating whatever you can do to win this game uh, it is it's one of those games when you finish it man you take a deep breath because you played a you played a long game but really really love this one here I stand you fought a war fought a war I'm not a war gamer you can play that all you want <laughs> <clears throat> my number 27 is giant box copycat this game is stupid funny because this is the one that is it freezy freeze Friedman freeze freeze okay yeah. sorry freeze he copycatted games he put a whole bunch of different types of things from different games in it a little power grid a little um let's see what else i don't know if i wrote it all down it's right, got some sorry. uh what through else? the ages to it it's got some puerto rico to it yeah um it has a lot of different Earlier games mechanics, I believe it. The score tracks attribute to I think Ticket to Ride. Oh yeah, with the 90, missing number. Yeah. Ninety one is missing, but yeah. ninety five is on there twice or something like that. It's just really funny. The artwork is super plain, but it it fits it somehow. It makes it quirky. Um, it was made in two thousand twelve, and it plays two to four. We've played it. Oh, we probably played it eight times now because yeah. we played the other day. Yeah, we played it the other day finally. Got it on the table again. Plays in about 95 minutes, but it's got auction and bidding, which we love, and a deck builder. So it's it's kind of cool how yes. all these me mechanics from all these different games work so well together in the same game. And you all start with the same card. you got to build your deck and place out your workers to get influence. And, um, yeah, the art kind of makes me think of Monopoly, like the rounded faces and sure. all. It's, a bit. it's very Monopoly-esque. Um, I suck at this game. <laughs> like really really bad but I still enjoy playing it so that's my number 27 copycat so speaking of deck builders <laughs> my number 26 is the granddaddy of the deck builders Dominion <clears throat> so we have a few of the Dominion expansions I think we have three other ones total yep. I, I, I love this game this was at one time my favorite game 
My only complaint of this game is it is a pain in the neck to set up and tear down. True story. Uh, but so it's one of those games when you get it set up, you play a few, you know, four or five times going through it. Every game is so different. I mean, you can pull out just change two or three cards in a in a series, and it is totally a different game. Really love how this one plays. Um, kind of wish we had played this one when it first came out. We kind of were late when this one came out. Uh, so everybody else had kind of played it to death by the time that we had gotten it. Uh, we still played it a lot. Though. Still played this it a lot. This was your favorite this for was, so long. And it's still, I mean, it's still my number twenty-six. Very high on my list. Uh, great deck builder. Um, I think it's my highest deck builder, but I'm not positive. I, gotta, I haven't looked at my list in a little while, so <laughs> i got to make sure about that. But uh, I love Dominion. It's clean. It's simple. It's easy to teach. Uh, there's a lot of deck builders that have come and gone since then that have added a lot of different mechanics. Um, but every once in a while, it's just nice to go back to the basics of Dominion and, and just play even the base set. Uh, really a lot of fun. My number 26 is Last Will. I was so excited when Kyle got me this game. I played it once at a friend's house, and I was like, this is this is the best thing. I love it. It has little top hats for pieces. The art is fantastic. It's really, it fits the genre of the game, the theme of the game. Um, it's a lot of fun, and it's very counterintuitive. Uh, you're basically playing Brewster's Millions in a game, which I think you said, um, yeah. this is already on your list. But it's true, you're trying to get rid of all your money, which is so counterintuitive in a game. It makes it even more fun. It was made in 2011, it plays 2 to 5, which is good. Always, always good to get those extra people in there. We've played it four times. I would really like to get it on the table more. It plays in about an hour. I mean, it's not even that long of a game, but it's super fun. They pack a lot of stuff into this 60 minutes. It's got action point allowance and hand management. Um, worker placement and um, the art and the components are really really nice and we do I don't have the expansion for this one yet but I think sure. the expansion adds what does it add to it I can't remember I think it just add, it adds a job we have to get fired from oh your that's job. right that's right so like one more element when you're earning money you got to get rid of your money and then you got to get fired on top of that but this is a really fun game last will my number 25 is Kingdom Builder, which is a great uh, abstract game. Very abstracty. Uh, one of the games when you kind of look at people playing it, it pops out because the board is so bright, bright and uh, you know all the hexagons you're trying to move around. Uh, this one is one of my favorite games. Same guy who did Dominion. Um, so very different. Uh, you know, there's there are cards in this game, but you're they're set up on the board and you go collect the cards so there's no deck building to this one he came up with a whole different type of game which is which is pretty amazing because uh, they're usually when somebody hits their game you'll see games very similar to it this one feels very different uh, we played this one uh, nine times uh, love it uh, won the spiels it's a very fun abstract kind of goals we you got some goals and you're trying to get these goals and get the most points uh, it's got some luck to it for sure when you're drawing cards if you can't draw the plots of land that you need you can't get your people out you can't do your goals but really love kingdom builder it's a fun game <clears throat> my 25 is splendor this game is so pretty i say that a lot i know but this one the components and the art are beautiful they i mean the the chips they're poker chips like they're that quality it's awesome. Um, it was made in 2014, plays two to four players. We've played it 11 times and plays in about half an hour, so it's a good little filler. Uh, you get set, set collection, and um, basically what you're doing is you're trying to build an engine. It's almost deck builder ish, but yeah. engine builder ish anyway. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, trying to get, like, you use the chips to get the cards and the cards give you permanent chips which have jewels on them so you get permanent jewels with the cards and then you add to it with the chips but the chips everyone's using so you kind of have to hunt and peck and pick which ones you want and and then you have public side goals and you're basically trying to get to 15 VPs to end the game but then if you end and you have more than that the person with the most wins and it's a very fun game and it won did it win or was it just up for it? It was just up for it. Did not win. Oh, that's right. A game that we don't like won. That's true. Camel Up. Camel which up. We have that's played and do not like. Splendor should have won. Splendor should have won. Yeah. So that's my 25, Splendor. My number 24 is a pretty recent game. Well, the reprint's pretty recent. Um, it's true. The Sheriff of Nottingham, 
love this game. Much more fun than it should be. I kind of when somebody described it to me in the beginning when I heard about it, I was like, oh, that doesn't sound very good. But we've played it. This is definitely a right group game where if you have the wrong group, it's probably not as good. This is a group that's better with people that you know. Um, inside jokes make inside all the jokes, difference. Inside jokes, sure. And, and knowing how, when people lie and don't lie and knowing their tells is a lot in this game. So in this game, you're just trying to bluff the sheriff by either getting through real goods or getting sneaking through some contraband. And there's some bribing, and the other players are bribing. It has got a lot of sense of humor to this game. Uh, we really like this one. Um, well, I guess my only really big complaint about this one is the components of it. We've had a lot of our friends whose bags have broke, and the snacks come. Yeah, off the, the snacks bags. come off the bags pretty easy. So you have to be kind of gentle. Ours hasn't happened that way yet, thankfully. But uh, I really like Sheriff Hunting Up. This is a good, good introductory party-ish type game that has it some some meaning. And if you have friends that don't like bluffing games and lying games. You do not have to bluff or lie to win this game. That's People true. have told the truth the entire game and won this game. So uh, this one we've played six times. Uh, really like Sheriff Nottingham. Great game. <clears throat> My 24 is Bruges. What? Another Feld? Seems impossible. We really like Feld, though. Um, it was made in 2013. It plays 2 to 4. But the expansion... Let's go to 5. Adds 5. Yay, Feld! Uh, the expansion also fixed the overpowered My Favorite Engraver card. Yes. I always get that card somehow. I don't know how. And I always don't win with it. But I still do really well with it. We've played it nine times. It plays about an hour. It's got deck building, dice, and the dice, again, not just any old rolling of dice. It actually um, it tells you how to use the rest of the turn, basically, with the, the dice. Yes, yes, that makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> it kind of dictates what you can buy on the turn and there how much go. gold you're going to get for different things and how much cards cost and things like that. So they, he did a great job this game making the dice unique. Words are hard. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> it's got city building. You're basically, your cards can either be a house or they can be used as your actions, what you want to do. And then there are evil, bad things that happen, like plague and rats, right? Rats, a lot of rats. and Fires. Yeah, fires and you lose stuff, but there are things that will protect you from it also. Um, the art and the components are really cool. The dice mechanic, of course, is really nice. Um, and basically, you're, you're merchants and you're competing for influence, power, status in this game. And it's Stefan Feld, so really all you have to say is it's Feld. It's Feld. That's pretty much it. That's my 24. That's Speaking of Stefan Feld, <laughs> my number 23 is one we just talked about, Bora Bora. Love this game. My only complaint with this game is it is one of those games, if you don't play it consistently, you will forget how to play it. That's true. It has a lot of rules to it. It's so It's crazy. probably his most fiddly rules type game, uh, but I love this one. It has great use of dice. The board is gorgeous. I know, know everybody says Feld doesn't do theme, but... It's really you know, pretty. This a, it's a busy board though. When you look yeah. at it, uh, when you walk up and look at this board, you're like, "What?" You can have, but it's a typical Feld game where once you learn the iconology, everything makes sense. Um, we don't have any rules to issues with this one. We just don't get on the table enough, enough because we just haven't played it enough to keep remembering. It's one of its longer games. It goes about two hours, um, and, that, and that's on his his was is on the longer side. Yes, but really enjoy Bora Bora. Just don't play this one enough. And it makes Tim and Bags wine, so that makes it even That's better. <laughs> My number 23 is Ingenious, which has already been on Kyle's list, but it was way too far down. Shameful. Ingenious is abstract, of course, my favorite type of game. Um, it was made in 2004, plays 1 to 4. I still don't understand playing a game by yourself, but I don't like to do anything by myself. So We played it 8 times, and it plays in about 45 minutes. It's abstract. You've got hand management, but your hand is the tiles um, that have different shapes and colors on them and you have to basically make a line but the way that you do that is so tricky at some point you have to really be paying attention it took me a while to grab on to actually how you're scoring that but once I did it made it even better um, and I like that it doesn't hinder Kyle with like the coloring issues it's got the different I mean, they're very different colors. You and the shapes the also shapes are different, help. so yes. that helps a lot, too. Um, I really like, actually, surprisingly enough, that you can block people in this. I usually don't like stuff like that, but it makes it even better. 
Um, and you can't run away with just one color. It's the way that you score things. It's your lowest score that wins or loses. So you have to be pretty much equal, or you want to be as equal as possible with all of the colors. So that hinders Kyle, because yeah. he likes to take one strategy and run with it, and he can't do that. I'm in definitely this. an extremist in games, and yes. you cannot be in this game. You have to have a well-balanced strategy and pay attention to all the colors. It's true. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. But this is a really great abstract. Ingenious. My number 22 is Pillars of the Earth. This is a clean, simple worker placement. A little bit older of a game now. It's also the game that I would say most surprisingly wasn't done by Feld. This feels like a Feld <laughs> game. Uh, it's not. It's a he did the uh, the two player card game. Card game, which has really just the same theme but nothing in common. But I really like the worker placement in this one. This one is so easy to teach, and it's so cool that the I don't care about art. I really don't. If I say something about art in a game, it stands out. This game has great <laughs> art. Uh, it's a the, big deal. The board on this game is gorgeous. This, Stone Age, and Abyss are probably the three best looking games I've ever played. I really... And Exit Empire is great, too. But <laughs> for board. They don't have a board. so uh, This has also has the coolest mechanic for going first. Wherever Everybody puts their pawns in a bag, and you draw them out one by one, and you can go first, but you got to pay more money. You can pass, save your money, but go later. And this is such a tight game, the money matters. I really like that. I don't know why anybody hasn't tried that Duplicate. since then. Yeah, at least, or modify it a little bit. That's a very cool mechanic. It has events, which I love in, in Euro games. I hate I hate events in Meritrash games. I like them <laughs> in Euro games, when they change it up a little bit without making, Killing someone. Yeah, basically. without killing some. And I like the events could be good or bad in this one. So, a very cool game. I really like Pillars of the Earth. And Tina's only played this one two players. She hasn't got to play this one. It's true. Yeah, that was on my list already. And I definitely do want to play that with more than two. Oh, this is familiar. Eggs and Empires. What? Kyle just had this. Okay, so Eggs and Empires was a Kickstarter game. It just came out in 2014. Plays two to six. We've played it seven, maybe more now, times. Plays in about 25 minutes. It is a really fun little filler. The art is fantastic. No matter what Kyle says, the art is fantastic. It is one of the prettiest games. Uh, there are There's bluffing in this game, deduction, auction bidding, hand management. It is a really fun gateway game even. The, the rules are not that complex that you couldn't teach it to newbies and have them love it right away too. Um, it's collecting dragon eggs, so there's really nothing Let's that I dragons. wouldn't love about it. There are exploding dragon eggs, which I like to give to Kyle, haha, <laughs> because it's funny. And we did a review on it on our channel, yeah, and that was our first review, so let us know how you think we did. <laughs> but that's my 22, Eggs and Empires. So my number 21 dun, 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 dun. is Lancaster. Been Yellow a lot box. of clean games in this, I think. Yellow uh, box. Love, love Lancaster. Probably... I think it's my favorite area control game. I gotta double check my list again, but <laughs> I haven't looked at my list in a while. Uh, area control. I, I don't know. Maybe not quite area control. King of the Hill. It's maybe. King of the Hill. King yeah. of the Hill may be the better way to describe it than than area control. It's true. Mean, very mean game. One of the meaner euros that you'll play, um, but intentionally mean. Where you know, there's some games where you like, I can go after one person, but I don't have to. This one, if you don't go after, you know, the spots that you need and push people off of it, you won't get anywhere in the game. So, I uh, really like this one. It has a voting mechanic, but there's not a lot of games that it has laws and you have to pass these laws in effect and everybody votes on them with cubes That's that fun. you can pick up during the game. That's cool. Nobody else, not a lot of games really do that. I, I really like, I wish more did. Um, we used to play this one a lot. Uh, we got nine plays, I think, of a log, but it seems like we have more than that. But We might, yeah. Yeah. But really love, love it, Lancaster. It's one of my favorites early games. This is one of the first ones that we played. Probably one of the first 20 games that we played. We played it at Lad's house. At Lad's house, yep. So, really like this one. Not, I am horrible at this game. Absolutely horrible at this game. I usually come in last, second to last. Uh, it is one of the ones that plays to five, which gives it a, a bump up for us because, you know, we don't find a lot of great five-player games. That's true. Um, even less six-player games. But, uh, really like Lancaster. And we have the expansion for this. We do have the expansion, one. the New Laws, I think is what it's called. Yeah, it yeah. adds it adds a few. Or Henry VIII, is that what it's called? I don't know, I can't remember what it's called. But it adds a little bit more to it than just the laws, even. Yeah, I think so. There might be two. I don't know. But yeah, that's a fun game. 
My 21 is Hansa Teutonica, which Kyle has finally learned to love, I think. Oh, I like hi. it. I don't know if I love it yet, but... It That's was... okay. He likes it. We played it. And I beat you, didn't I? Well... I didn't win, but I beat yeah, you, I didn't so. I? That's all that matters to me. Sure, sure. I never win games. Like, hardly ever. But Hansa Teutonica, oh my goodness, Dawson introduced me to this the day I introduced myself to him, I think. Yeah. That was the first game I played with Steve. And... It is so much fun. It plays two to five, but playing it with five is torturous. Please only play it with two to four. Oh my goodness gracious. Uh, it was made in 2009, and three plays is incorrect. I think we're up to like five now. Probably, I think, because yeah. I think we played it twice recently. Plays about 45 to 90 minutes, and basically you are you have a, a, a tech tree board, which I love. So you're trying to upgrade all your stuff to get more actions, to get more pieces out so you can put them out. But it's got this really cool mechanic that Steve kicks our butt with. It's the bounce mechanic. So you can like say, all right, I'm going to bounce you. So then you have to take a person off of your current action supply and you have to put him and somebody else, like two pieces into your reserve. So you, you're getting punished for doing this, but the other person gets two pieces and they have to just reassemble them onto the adjoining tracks. So it's kind of a cool mechanic that not a lot of, or any other that I, I haven't seen the bouncing mechanic yeah. before. It has a whole bunch of different little things like that on it. And basically you have to get to, oh my goodness, what is it? Like 20? 20, 20, 20 triggers BPs the end game. Triggers the end. There's a couple other ways, but that's usually how Steve wins. <laughs> but I got close and I love to make Steve crazy in this game. That's my goal. Not winning, just making Steve crazy because he loves this game so much. It's hilarious to me. <laughs> And you're building a network, and um, you basically can decide if you want to use the the action or the what that comes with it. The action, it's not the action. The thing that you, instead of c taking control of the city, you use that. You get the upgrade. Upgrade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the word. So you either decide I'm going to take control of this city, or I'm going to put my person in the city. It may not be control at that point, and. Either that or you take the upgrade for your tech tree board. It's really fun game. There's a lot going on, but it's a lot of fun. And the more people, just not five. Because five yeah, is... Yeah, five. And we just like got the uh, expansion. Britannia. The Britannia map, which may make the five-player game better. I don't it could. know. Uh, we haven't tried it yet. But That's it's true. supposed to also improve the two-player game, which we haven't tried yet. That's so. true. Yep. But this is a really, really fun game. And it's got one of the boring boxes. But it's really it's fun. Pretty bad box. <laughs> That was my 21. All right, so that's it for this list. We'll be back in our top 20 when we get back. So thanks for watching. Thanks. Now we're